Hi, I'm Matt. I'll be showing you how to use the Energy Footprint tool. You can find this at parishreturns.churchofengland.org and your church returning officer should have access to that. Carbon footprinting can be very complicated to work out. The Energy Footprint tool has been produced in a way that tries to simplify this process and to tailor it for churches. A handy tip is to save or print the form helpfully provided at the logon screen of the Parish Returns website. You can use that to record information found out as you go, and then it's all readily to hand when you complete the online version. There's both a doc and a PDF version to choose from. The content's the same, just different file formats made available for the way you like to work. I've opened an example here. It will focus firstly on the types and the amounts of energy used to run a church. It will also allow you to record this information for other related buildings, such as a church hall. This information should be available to you through utility bills, so it's useful to find those now. Grab all the bills that cover January the 1st to December 31st for the year that you want to measure. You're likely to have bills for electricity and for gas, but may also have to consider other energy sources like oil. The footprint tool will want you to know how much energy has been consumed in that year in kilowatt hours or kWh. It will also ask you to enter the financial cost of that as well. The utility bills should have that information or enough to convert a measure of units into kilowatt hours this should be based on a number of actual readings, but if there are estimated readings that span the year boundary, you may have to work out the average consumption over that period if the estimates are likely to be too high or too low. It may take a little while to find those bills and total the readings, so it's worth doing that bit of research first. In order to provide a more complete picture of your data, the tool also asks for some information about the size of the buildings and their usage. If this has already been supplied via parish returns, the tool will pre-populate the data and you can adjust those figures if required. If not, you may want to get this extra detail to hand as well. Energy use will vary depending on how big a building is and how frequently that building is used. A large cathedral will naturally use more energy than a small village hall. So, to help understand how efficiently energy is being used, the Energy Footprint tool will use data about the size of those buildings and the attendance at them. Firstly, the tool would like to know the square metrage of the buildings. If not already available, this may be possible to work out from building plans. A friendly architect or surveyor should be able to help with this, or maybe a local school could use it as a hands-on maths project. For a more accurate assessment, the tool also allows you to enter a smaller value that represents the amount of that space that's actually usable. Secondly, the tool would like to know how many people use the building each week. There's a space to enter an average for Sunday services, an average for all the midweek services, and a final average for all the non-service or visitor attendances. With all that information gathered, you are ready to log in and enter your data. For demonstration purposes, I've logged into a test church. What you see will be specific to your church. Here at the bottom is the new section containing the energy footprint tool. The PDF we just looked at is available again here. You can also see it lets you know when you first created a footprint and when it was last modified. There's also a percentage complete reference so you can see how far you got last time. Be assured that while the form is not long, should you need to, to stop and come back to it later, there are regular points where you can save and return to menu. Let's click here to enter our data. Part A is where you record the sources of energy used, electricity, gas, 
oil, and so on. Click a box for each type. The tool defaults to recording data for the main church building. But here you can also tell it whether you want to record data for an additional building. At this point, add the same again for that second building. When you're done, click Next to save the entries and move on to the next page. On subsequent pages, you can also click back to return to this page if needed. We now see that on the left menu, Part A is showing as green for completed. We also now have Parts D and E for entering data about other buildings. Part B is for entering data about the utility information that you've gathered previously. First, tell it whether the primary heating fuel is electricity or gas. And then fill in information about your electricity, who the supplier is, whether the tariff is renewable energy or not, how much electricity has been purchased over the course of the year in kilowatt hours, and how much that electricity cost in pounds. And then again for gas, how much gas was purchased, in what unit you're measuring that in, in this case kilowatt hours, and again how much did that cost. Click next to save and move on. Part C is where data may be brought in from previous parish returns. If the data is available, it will be pre-populated as it is here. If not, just enter the data in the fields manually. Or if you don't agree with the pre-populated data, the values can be overwritten. Enter some uh, data for the usable floor area as well, if you know it, or make a reasonable guess. And then also just check your person hours attendance figures as well. Again, overwrite if you're not entirely satisfied about what's been pre-populated for you. In this example, I also have a church hall to record data for, so I'll do that next. This time it's not brought any data through, so I'll just enter everything manually. And now we've made it to the end. Headline results are displayed first, showing carbon or CO2 emission in tonnes. And then an infographic similar to those found on household appliances will show how efficient that energy rating is for both the size of the building and for the average attendance. A value from G all the way up to A++. Finally, the tool will show some of the metrics that underpin those ratings. Here is where you can then submit that data. There are some buttons to give feedback and display further church data, and some helpful links for what could be done next. This information will be valuable for individual churches to assess their current status and help plan for a reduction in energy usage. It will also be useful for the Church of England as a whole to understand how it is progressing on the journey to net zero. Another benefit is that completing a carbon footprint like this will also contribute to your eco-church rating from a Rocha as will a plan to reduce your energy consumption year on year. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for listening.